Hi, I have a question for you. Have you ever been through a long season of waiting on the Lord and he, where He just doesn't seem like He's answering you? And you've actually asked Him, where are you, God? Where are you? I've been looking for you everywhere. I've been waiting and listening for you and you just aren't showing up. Well, I just came out of a season like that where it just seemed like all the prayers I was ask, uh, asking of Him were not being answered and He just seemed like I would get little pieces here and there, but a, my big prayer wasn't being answered. And so I was asking, where are you, God? And um, one day he seemed to be asking me a question back and I wrote a journal about it. And I just wanted to share with you as I shared this w with some women I was teaching last week and, and it really blessed their heart because like I didn't realize like, like me, so many women are asking that question or have ask that question. And so I just want to share this with you. And uh, a lot of times in my journal, I, I, um, I write to myself, I refer to myself as bride. So um, likely enough, this, this is um, titled, Hey Bride. And this is God's response back to me after a prayer time with him where I was asking, where are you? And this is his response. Hey Bride, you are waiting for me to show up for you, but I am already here. I'm right where I have always been. I am the Word made flesh, and I'm waiting right here for you, right in the light of my Word. Sometimes you read right through the words and you walk right past me as if I am a to-do list instead of the living presence of God, your Father, the one who longs to speak tenderly to you. I have a question for you. It is the same one I asked Adam after he fell in that garden. It's the same one I asked Elijah as he waited for me in weariness on that mountaintop. Where are you? I see you walk by me as you live on the outside and skirt the boundaries of my rest. You stay anxious and afraid because you still think that you could find rest somehow through manipulating your circumstances. Don't you know that you were created for far more than this world? All you seek will never be found here for you were made for my kingdom which exists far beyond this world. I have provided it all and I'm right here waiting for you to simply look up and receive from me. As long as you stay in you and in the darkness and in that place of doubt and questioning and unrest, you can never enter my rest. You can never enter into who I am. Why not let go, turn around, and enter into my light and let my words become your words. Let my flesh become your flesh. For you are surely flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, my beloved bride. Come stand in the light with me until you know and understand that I am for you. I'm not against you. I am with you and in you, and so long to be in every single one of your moments, every single part of your being. Stop standing on the shores of what if and enter into what is, for I am your I am. You are mine, and you were bought with an extravagant price. I traded everything I had for you. So stop questioning me and start beginning to just enjoy me in this life that I've bought for you. It breaks my heart to see you, my child, living like a pauper in this world when I made you a princess. This all comes from a root, a root of unbelief and distrust in me, the one who died so you could know me and believe me and trust me. I ask you again, where are you? Why not turn around and come home 
and experience me. I've been waiting for you. I just want to share with you from Isaiah 43, and I'm going to personalize this into my words. But now, thus says the, our Lord who created us, O oh, Jacob, he who formed you, O oh, Israel, fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And John 1, 1 and 4 through 5. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. In Him was life, and that life is the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and that light shines in our darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. And then Genesis 3, 9 through 10. Then the Lord called Adam and said, Where are you? And so he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid myself. Oh, Jesus, forgive us for hiding. Forgive us for when we don't come out of hiding and just trust you and come out and let us be found in you. Thank you for coming for us, no matter where we are, and rescuing us from all the places we hide from you. Thank you for giving us rest in who you are and never stopping and never coming for us until we abide fully in you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you know where we are and you know how to get us home. It's in your powerful, precious name we pray. Amen.